We're here today in East London to talk about um, one of our newest customers, and it's coming from a sector which I think there is a lot of um, talk about at the moment, um, which is vertical farming. I'm really lucky to have Chris here, who's the CEO of Harvest London, who is really pioneering this concept and will tell us a little bit more about um, the work that he's doing. So, Chris, I mean, it's a hugely exciting concept. Why is vertical farming so important for the future? Vertical farming is very important because we have a multitude of problems that we've created as part of the food system that we've created. We're going to have a lot more mouths to feed come 2050 and there are all of these problems around water usage, around soil degradation that technology like this does go some way in terms of addressing. Um, I think in terms of um, vertical farms we can produce crops that would normally have to come from very far away and we can do that locally in East London, um, very close to where our customers are. So gone are the days where we have to ship you know, Thai basil from Southeast Asia just to cater to our cosmopolitan tastes. Not only does it produce hundreds of times more than traditional agriculture, but it does that with 95% less water, 95% less fertilizer, and is 100% pesticide free. But we don't really see this as an either or. We see agriculture and vertical farming forming a part of an ecosystem of food production. There's always going to be a place for traditional agriculture, but hopefully this is something that can augment that. Um, and in particular, focus on the crops that we all enjoy, but does have to come from very far away because we can't grow it here. Man in here is quite extraordinary, isn't it? It's lovely. One of the reasons why we're working together with you, Octopus, is um, looking at the way that you operate. And um, you, of course, um, when you talk about these controlled environments, um, have to use a lot of preferably green electrons um, in the model. Um, it would be great, actually, just to talk a little bit about how um, these products are grown in those, those very controlled environments and the types of equipment that you're using that's using electricity. Absolutely. So. We grow um, in a, a controlled environment where we actually control every variable of growth. So we, inside this box, we can control lights, humidity, temperature, essentially creating the perfect growing conditions for our crops so that it tastes the best, it lasts the longest on the shelf, um, and it doesn't have to travel from very far away. So in there right now, it's, it's 28 degrees Celsius because it's the perfect growing conditions for basil. So as we grow our basil, one of the reasons that we keep it very warm in there and keep the lights on all the time is so that we can grow quite a lot of produce in a very short amount of time and space. So in there, our lights are on about 20 hours a day, which obviously means that the, the plants grow a lot quicker. Touching on what you've said around um, the service that Octopus is providing us, nighttime for our plants is actually between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. And we've done that in partnership with you guys because that's when um, electricity is most expensive. And you know, to a plant, it doesn't really matter when nighttime is, and and they're perfectly happy in there. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it, I think um, it really is an interesting concept when you look at um, things like our triband tariff, or indeed fully agile pricing, where um, businesses like yours can actually respond to the way that electricity is generated and passes through the grid, so that we can actually look at the cheaper times of day when you're going to be using the bulk of your electricity. Um, and I think actually into the future, while we're talking about Basel in, in North London here um, at the moment, um, it could just unlock um, something that's really quite globally interesting um, when we think about being able to secure food production more in the UK. Absolutely. For most UK customers, their Basel will come from Italy in the summer, but actually will come from places like Egypt or Israel in the winter. Um, one of our customers, by transitioning their supply chain of basil to us, um, are saving about 250,000 wow. food miles per year. Wow, that's amazing. Harvest London, over the three years that we've existed, we've grown over a hundred different things. We've really focused on the ingredients that our chefs and restaurants use that would have to come from very far away. Ingredients that come from Southeast Asia or Mexico, that you don't get in the UK at all, or if you do get, does have to come from those places and come very far away. So what we've done is we've focused on those ingredients, we've focused on those crop varieties that do have to come from very far away, and we, we, we've proven that we can grow them in a warehouse in East London. And because that we can grow from harvest to delivery in four hours, 
the quality is just beyond anything that you can get from you know crops that have been shipped or, or transported over. Yeah, brilliant. And it doesn't um, actually cause any any problems with the crop, um, disrupting its kind of growing cycle in that way, no? No, absolutely it doesn't. So the, our crop, as I said, it's a perfect summer day in there um, every day. And as long as we're consistent about when nighttime is, um, whether that's actual nighttime for us or between three to seven, the plants are perfectly happy in there and we've optimized for that as well. Yeah. So um, I think as we maybe move into this world where um, vertical farming, I mean, at the moment, I think it probably makes up a very low percentage of the way that we produce food. Um, and I think you actually need all forms of food production probably working together to create the most perfect picture. Um, what is, what's the electricity picture for you? Because I'm presuming you will start to use more electrons, but then actually want to become more sustainable and adopt that into your practice as well. That's absolutely right. So at the moment, we run on 100% renewable from Octopus Energy. Um, in the future, when we as an organization start to scale and start to get bigger, we're also planning for generating our own green electrons through our own solar farms, through our own um, energy creation infrastructure. Energy usage is one of the biggest challenges that vertical farms face. It is about between 40 to 50% of our overall cost. So working with companies like you guys, like Octopus Energy, to be able to bring that down, ensure that we're using energy from renewable sources in the first place, but then partnering with you guys in the longer term to build a virtuous circle of how of how energy is used and, and, and generated. I think um, actually into the future where we work in a world like that, where you're creating your own green electrons and then there may be times where you have to import it off the grid. Um, and certainly at, at Octopus what we're hoping to kind of unlock is this world where using green electrons um, is the cheapest electron. And I'd imagine actually for a model like this, in order to grow and to take um, maximum kind of advantage of the opportunity in the market right now, actually being able to get the cost of those electron stands must be super important. Hence the reason why you're working with us kind of with, with our, our dynamic pricing. That's absolutely right. Um, it, it is really, really important for us to consider all of the operating expenses that go into running a facility like this and of those operating expenses, energy is the single biggest factor. So Chris, I mean, we're currently in a climate where um, we've just been through a COVID recession, we're currently in it, um, and one of the things that everyone is talking about is this, this way of building back in a greener way. And vertical farming comes up as one of the models, actually, that could help us do this. Absolutely. I mean, I think we all experienced, you know, people going into the groceries and buying too much more than what they need, but we all experienced kind of supply chains and a global supply chain breaking down. And I can't think of a more important supply chain than the food supply chain. 85% um, of our produce in this country comes from Europe. And with the challenges of Brexit, with the challenges of COVID, we've seen you know, our shelves being empty. Um, and that's because we've built a system that relies on a total global supply chain. Here is an opportunity to not only shorten that supply chain, but also actually bring the manner of production closer to our homes. It's all about bringing production closer to the point of consumption rather than us relying on food travel and food miles. At the moment, um, I think vertical farming is almost kind of minuscule in its, in its impact in the way that we produce food um, and into the future. Um, how, how big do you think this could get uh, with that balance between um, kind of current agricultural production and, and vertical farming together? Well, I have a lot of hope for this industry. Um, to give you an idea, we're already planning our next facility, which is going to be 30 times this current size. The UK is lagging in terms of how we compare our vertical farming industry to places like the US, places like the Netherlands, places like Japan. The Netherlands is a very, very small country and yet is the second largest exporter of fresh produce in the world, next only to, next only to, to the Americans. Um, and that's because that they have adopted controlled environment agriculture techniques, of which vertical farming is just one. You know, they're very big about greenhouse growing, um, and they've totally transformed their food supply chain to be a lot more local. 
and of course uh, I think we could do the same and, and probably in, in the UK um, the way that we kind of see it at the moment it's a bit like um, when the iPhone first launched and it was only for a specific group of people um, but actually as we try and imagine what vertical farming could do um, to the way that we view the world it could actually it could change significantly um, the way that we grow and we produce food into the future. Absolutely I think you know we've all developed our cosmopolitan tastes we all want the Mexican burrito and the Italian pasta and this is about being able to have that not at the expense of sustainability yeah yeah absolutely brilliant well thank you very much thank you <laughs>